Hello, welcome to CM videos. My name is Dr. Michael Okreke. I'm making another video as part of my Abacus tips and tricks series. And this video is aimed at showing you how you can import a model from Abacus into an ANSYS. So this is a question that a user in the channel asked about. Is there a way I can import a porous media from Abacus into ANSYS? This is really important because it gives you the possibility to create a model in a different platform bring it into a new platform that you're comfortable in using and then begin to make your modeling in that if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel like and share so that you know this video continues to be popular for others to use okay so obviously the objective here is to import from abacus to ansys so essentially we start with the model in abacus and we ultimately end up into ansys so how are we going to basically do this and the first thing i really want you to understand are the file formats that Abacus uses. Um, there are different CAD file format that we have with an Abacus and the understanding that and their difference is really important in terms of being able to import them into ANSYS. So basically the first file format is this step file. You know, it's a high order version of, of CAD geometry for taking content, you know, CAD information from one platform to another platform. The other version, which is quite common, is this IGS format. It could be IGS or IGES format. Again, it's a very good format. However, it has limitations and some of its limitations have been corrected using the step format. And there are other formats that are also used, which are the SAT formats, but the top two are the ones that I would be recommending for this. Also, if you're creating your model within a CAD geometry, you could also save it in any of these formats in order to bring it into the code that you want to use. Uh, in this case, whether it's Abacus or ANSYS. So there are two cases that we're going to look at. I'm going to look at the porous media, uh, which is the subject of, of the query that the viewer of this channel mentioned. I also want to do something more demanding, which is basically a bi-directional composite. Again, if you're interested in the videos about first the porous media, please do look on the card here so that you can see videos I've made about the porous media. And then if, again, if you're interested in the bi-directional bi composite, again, I've put in the card videos about them. Okay, for the first model that we're looking at, which is basically this porous media model. So this is a, a model that I've built in the past. Um, and if we, so it's got some kind of um, porosity on the edges as well as the inside. So if we look inside a bit, you could see that it's got some porosities within it. So the first thing we're going to do with this is that we're going to export this model as a part and the part version. So I'm going to call it my porous media. Um, I'm going to use the SA, STP version. So let's call it the step file. So again, these are the file filters that we're talking about. So you could use the step file, the SEIS or the IGS. So I'm just going to use the step version which I'm calling porous media step okay so that's exported in that format so again if we go back here and do export uh, the same part model uh, we're now going to do an IGS so so porous media IGES okay so so those are the two versions exported there's something that Abacus asks for you when you're trying to export, that you're going to export it with a flavor. So this is basically how it tries to interpret what you're trying to do because an IGS essentially is both a surface file and a, a volumetric file. So depending on what you want to do, so you could use AutoCAD, which is basically sketches, or you could use SolidWorks, or you could use a standard version that I would like to use SolidWorks. Um, again, if you're really interested in this, please look up the Abacus documentation on this to see what this, uh, the meaning of all the other bits. But that SolidWorks is a common card too, and I'm going to use the flavor of SolidWorks for doing this. So that's done for, for this case. Okay, so the next model that we're going to look at is this bi-directional composites. Again, if I show you the material, so you could see the bi-directional composites. So these are the fibers oriented in zero and 90 degree directions. So we want to again export this into different formats. So I export this particular part. Um, so I'm going to call it by B D comp. And so let's start, let's use the other formats, you know, just to see. So the SCIS format, so B D comp, ACIS. So this is one of the formats. Um, again, it's asking for what version. So anything from the release 24 down 
will be acceptable so we can work with that now I could also export the same model using the step again I've not included a VDF file because the VDF file is a surface file it would never work for the kind of 3d geometry that we're looking at here so if you try to do the VDA it would not work so you only have these three because they are the geometric file versions that are used so the VDF file is made popular by the German auto industry for again the the surfaces of cars and, and and things like that so it would not work for our system so let's do an a step version as well so bd comp step so this is fine um so we've got the step version of this geometry we also have the aci version of those geometries so the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to load up ANSYS and then we'll run the model okay so in terms of knowing exactly where this model has been exported to you need to find the current working directory that you're operating in Abaco. So if you do file uh, set working directory, it will give you a link of where you're currently exporting this file since so we cut. So I'll just cut that so that I can then open it when I get into ANSYS. So now here we are. So we've loaded up ANSYS. Uh, and ANSYS, obviously, for those of you that are not aware, ANSYS, ANSYS basically has this structure. So the way I would go about this is I'm going to, for the both cases, do a static structural analysis. So, of course, this is the module that does static structural analysis in ANSYS. Okay, so I drag it and bring it in there. So what this basically means that I'm bringing in this analysis module for my work within ANSYS. So, and the important thing to really note here is that we are dealing with the geometry. So you're looking at importing your model, model at a geometric level. So let's do this first one. I'm going to call this my porous media uh, step. So when we finish this, we can look at the other ones. So if I right click here and say, okay, I want to create. So in this version of ANSYS I have, there are two geometry analysis module that exists. One called the space claim geometry analysis module and the design modeler. The space claim is much more robust to use, but I suppose most people are quite comfort com comfortable with the design modeler. So I'm going to work with design modeler. So if you click on new design modeler, so what this will do is that it will import this design modeler into your working environment so that you can then bring the model in. So this is basically what we have here. So I can now say file here, import external geometry file. Now, because I know where the location is, I'll paste that location and then I'll find the model that I'm looking for. So basically the porous media step file is right there at the top and then I click open. So you notice it looks like nothing has actually happened, but there is this import one option. So it's brought it as part of this, you know, the sequence, the workflow and currently zero pass zero bodies. So what we need to do is to right click and ask it to generate this model. So right away it generated the model and we can see the porous media that we had previously actually has now been brought in into the analysis module. So we now have it with all the elliptical porosity, the spherical porosity, and the amorphous shape porosity on the edges, and so on and so forth. So of course with this, you can then go ahead and start doing your modeling. So we're happy with this. Now, obviously, you've got your geometry the data, the geometry, then you can begin to set up your model and do your analysis exactly the, the normal way you would have worked in ANSYS. Okay, so but let's try another format. So I'm going to bring in the next structural analysis. So second version, keeping that one in place. So this will also be the porous media IGES. So again, the same kind of argument we used before, you right click on that and do design modeler. Okay, so within this design modeler, so what will happen is it will load a different version of the design modeler, which is basically this one. And similarly, we'll do import from an external geometry, put the path name that we're interested in, and then the porous media IGS is what we need here. So again, import the model as usual, so we right click and generate. Okay, so there's a slight difference in terms of whether you're using a, a solid work level as against just a, and if you, and most importantly too, it has identified the different parts that make up this model. So the idea is that you can easily go and pick up these different parts and use them for your analysis. So this is really important, especially for this kind of domain, because you want to have different parts that make up the system. In the previous case, everything was imported as a single model when it's a step module. So basically it's a geometric file. 
But now we're asking it to import it as a step, as an, an IGS with an app, a SolidWorks uh, flavor. You could see that it consists of all the different parts. And then you can bring some of them, suppress them, you know, do whatever you like with these different models. So that's for this porous media. Okay, so for the third case, we bring in again another structural, um, static structural analysis, and we call this VD composite um, ACIS. So this is the other file format. And what I would like to do now is to do it in a different way. So we could say here, I just want to import my geometry. I browse to the location where the geometry is. And obviously we're looking at BD composite SCIS. So you pick up that. Now it's been imported as a geometry, but it hasn't been opened. So what we need to do is to right click on that. And you did this geometry either in design modeler as previously or in space claim. So I'll write to use space claim, which is a different and uh, cis resident geometry modification environment. So we're going to use this to do the analysis and I'm going to show you how it works. This is what you get when you bring it into the space claim design environment. And this basically becomes our, our model, you know, the bi-directional composite model that we have. And we can, you know, we can play against with it, you know, press down the center, center button and you can rotate and look around. You know, it's a really lovely um, environment. You could even modify the model right away by using this pull button. So you can click the top and then, you know, you can go up or down depending on what, you, what you're what you trying to do. So you can right away begin to modify this model as, as you see fit. Um, so it started with an original model, but here we are, we can make some analysis right away on it, make, make adjustments. So this is one possibility um, of what you can do with this, with this domain. Okay, even these things, you can adjust, begin to adjust them, you know, as you see, see fit. So the design claim, um, the space claim is a, a good environment for making adjustments from the original model that we have. And again, it also creates the individual modules as you're generating them. So the SCIS also works quite well, even in this environment. So let's do the final case. So we've done step IGS, SCIS. So let's do a step environment as well for the BD composite. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to again do uh, static structural. So this will be the BD composite step file. So it's a step file that we used. So again, we can import the model here as well. So import this model. So the BD composite. So it's a step file. Okay. So again, it gets imported into that environment. And like we did before, even though it's a step file, we can analyze it in a space claim uh, geometric analyzer, which is similar to, you know, the DM. So you could see here, the DM geometry is well identified. This icon for space claim is also identified in those. Okay, so you could see with a step file, with a step file brought in here, you could see what's happening. Again, it's identifying each of those components individually as surfaces, actually. So you really have to be careful how you deal with these systems. You know, if depending on what it is as surfaces, you get a different response. So what we're going to do finally is to try and export the same model. So export the same part, um, but not as, so let's do it as an SCSBD comp um, IGES. Okay. So, and then we're going to use um, the SOLIDWORKS flavor as usual and come back here. So within ANSYS, so let's put the, the, the next version of ANSYS. So this will be, be the composite IGES. Okay. So I'm going to import this geometry. So import this geometry um, from whatever the location was, which is this BD. Okay. So import this model is there and let's edit it using a design modeler. Okay. So we're going to edit the design model and see if it's able to pick up the different components and make up the system. Uh, not as surfaces like we saw before, but actually as complete bodies. So here now the import we generate. So you could see, yes. So it's come up correctly and we could see that we have again surfaces, um, surface bodies. 
So basically, they are complete bodies in themselves. So what we have here are complete bodies in themselves. So, and of course, right at the top end here, you've got the solid, which is a matrix. So this looks like a nicer way, you know, something similar to what you get with, ans with um, ANSYS. So that's really all that I wanted to show in this video. It's a quick video just to show you how to get a model from Abacus to ANSYS. And what we've shown is how you can do it in an IGS, you know, uh, style with a step file are usually typically the best ones to use. If this is the kind of content that you like, please do subscribe to this channel so that when content like this are made, you'll be the first to see it. Also, please do look on the playlist of my Abacus tip and tricks so that you could get insight into some of the other videos that I've made guiding you into what, how to work within Abacus, you know, in an intelligent and efficient manner. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.